powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Monday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, Montana is in phase two reopening today. Restrictions removed for out of state visitors. Montana gates open in Yellowstone National Park and more friends and family can gather in one location. But first this noon. Silence is complicit. Silence is complicit. Silence is complicit. As protests continued overnight across the country over the death of George Floyd, about 150 people are now gathered at the Missoula County Courthouse. So far, the situation remains peaceful. MTN stations are monitoring rallies across the state. Times are not yet certain. We do know at this time that there is a scheduled peaceful rally in Billings this Sunday. Well, President Trump takes new steps to deal with the protests which have rocked the nation, some of them playing out just yards away from his front door. Natalie Brand has the very latest from Washington, D.C. Graffiti on the Lincoln Memorial and glass on the sidewalk show just some of the damage from violent protests overnight. Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser toured the city this morning. I'm very angry that people would destroy um, their own city or people who are come here and destroy our city. The demonstrations in the nation's capital were peaceful throughout the day as thousands marched against racial injustice in America. But some began looting and damaging buildings after the sun went down. All of us need to work to make sure uh, that we stop these, that we stop destruction. Um, but we are focused on what we need to do to change our, our country. Some of the damage includes a fire in the basement of the historic St. John's Church near Lafayette Square, just across from the White House. Every president since James Madison has attended a service here. CBS News has confirmed the Secret Service briefly moved President Trump to the White House bunker during the protest Friday night. White House advisors are weighing the idea of the president addressing the nation. On Twitter, he blamed far-left Antifa radicals for the violence. A national Oval Office address is not going to stop Antifa. What's going to stop Antifa is action, and this president is committed to acting on this. Attorney General William Barr ordered the Bureau of Prisons to send riot teams to Miami and Washington, D.C. And when you have somebody in power who breathes oxygen to hate under the rocks, you can doubt through the rocks. Former Vice President and presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden met with African-American leaders this morning to talk about how to defuse tensions. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. And President Trump held a conference call with governors, law enforcement and national security officials this morning to discuss quelling those violent protests. And now it's time to check in on the weather scene across the state. Another beautiful day, at least for now. Ed. That's right. We do have some areas, Janelle, we're going to be watching as we get into the afternoon and evening for some stronger thunderstorms. You can see right through central Montana and then also off into the eastern plains for areas from around Bozeman, Three Forks, uh, all the way up towards Stanford, Lewistown and eastward towards Billings. We'll see a potential for at least a few storms. Strong winds are the biggest threat there, and for the eastern edge of Montana, strong winds and large hail are possible once we get from Miles City off into North and South Dakota. So here's how the weather system's coming together. We'll watch this line of showers and thunderstorms trudge through Great Falls, Lewistown. You'll also be in the line for some of these showers, and that could linger into tomorrow morning. We'll take a closer look at details coming up. All right, thanks, Ed. Well, Montana is now officially in phase two of the reopening process. Starting today, the 14-day quarantine for travelers coming into the state is lifted. Now, some tourists already taking advantage by heading to Yellowstone National Park, where the Montana gates opened at 10 o'clock this morning. And all across the state, gatherings can increase to 50 people, and bars and restaurants will operate at 75% of their capacities. Well, as the state pushes forward with phase two, state health officials announced four new confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now, this includes two cases in Gallatin County and one in each Bighorn and Yellowstone counties. This after a weekend burst of cases at the Yellowstone County Jail jail where seven inmates and a staff member tested positive. The state reports 41 active cases this noon and a 17th person has died from the coronavirus in Wyoming. A woman without any known conditions that would have put her at higher risk passed away in Fremont County. The state also reports seven new confirmed cases, including one in Bighorn County, Wyoming. Now 52 cases are active statewide. 
A 21-year-old Missoula woman is dead after a crash southeast of Missoula last night. Granite County deputies, Missoula County Search and Rescue, and Air Resources were dispatched to the report of a vehicle crash into Rock Creek about 22 miles up from the interstate. Now, the vehicle, a 2014 Jeep Wrangler, was headed north on Rock Creek Road with four occupants. The vehicle struck a rock with the right front tire, forcing the Jeep off the road, down the embankment, and into the creek where it overturned. The Granite County Sheriff says the woman died as a result of drowning. Her name has not yet been released. And in Billings, police say they're investigating the Sunday night deaths of a 35-year-old man and a 34-year-old woman as murder-suicide. Police responded to the 2100 block of Canyon Drive to find the bodies. Lieutenant Brandon Woolley says the man appeared to have self-inflicted of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Well, we have some good news, an update on a story we brought you last Friday. A Billings veteran received his dog tags after a 15 year old boy found them in the backyard of his Sheridan, Montana home. 84 year old Jack Bennett's mother lived in that house until 1982 and Bennett's isn't sure how his tags ended up in the yard, but he says he's happy to have them back. It was a pleasant surprise and I, I was very happy to get them. I, I, I never thought I'd ever see them again. That's for sure. It's very nice to see that people still honor the vets the way she said here in this letter, thanking me for sacrifice to our country. Then she also said, thank you again for your service, and God bless you, and God bless America. You know, that's uh, very nice. And Jack says he and his wife Beverly will plan a trip to Sheridan to meet the boy and his family. Well, we have more ahead on your new news today, including a Montana Vietnam veteran who after years returned to Vietnam for some closure. The time now is 1207, but first meteorologist Ed McIntosh is in next with your statewide weather forecast.